having a situational analysis, which, so the assumption for today's workshop was that they are small towns and they don't need a conventional systems. And in that light, what is the separate <coughs> management and what are the technologies for doing the treatment? That was the assumption. So we uh, what we discussed was a thorough situational analysis on how to arrive at what types of on-site treatment systems are needed in the first place. So that is what we were discussing about. And uh, then the choice of technology actually depends on a lot of the situational analysis which is carried out as to what is the current situation of that town, only what are the situations of the septic tanks which are there, as of now what is happening to the uh, water from the septic tank uh, coming out and uh, what is it that we need to do, finally what is the use of what is treated, uh, what is, uh, whatever choice of technology we have, what is going to be the uh, use of that. That is what would you like to add something? Yeah, I think we were actually talking about from to start from the situation and analysis uh, from the what the city, what the issue the city is facing, uh, and then uh, look at uh, what are the priority areas that need to be addressed. And not just focusing on the uh, treatment part, but starting from the household itself. Whether there's an OD issue, the toilet issue, is a containment issue, and is there an impact on? the environment at the local household level. Uh, then uh, deciding, uh, the chances are that it will be decided that it's not a centralized a fight storage, but mostly uh, because it's a small city, it could be a on-site system. Then deciding uh, what would be the frequency of uh, uh, emptying, that would be good to, I think, the needs of that particular community. And how to get that, uh, uh, what is the volume of sludge for which we need to make, uh, build this treatment facility and we also discussed generally about the technology and uh, we should start simple, uh, start with something as, uh, that is doable and also estimate how much of the sludge we can actually bring, practically speaking, I think some of the presentations had that and uh, manage it from there. Then it probably, you know, uh, the education and the awareness and the regulation and put in place as the first two to three years to achieve this and that would actually take the city from where we are now to something that is uh, you know uh, practically achievable okay thank you table uh, think of it and we decided like uh, it should be from the bottom up approach like uh, if we if our city has to be decided to technology and all that we should have first the stakeholder consensus like uh, what we have to do and it should be in a plan uh, properly and then uh, we also think like the promotions are very important like the awareness spending and uh, spreading and uh, also like uh, we also need to think of incentives to give to the household basis so that they will be interested for the uh, and they will take the actively part of the fecal slush management. Some of inst incentives could be like a manhole installation, like a, if uh, your if your septic tank is not properly designed, it doesn't have an open um, thing. So we can have a incentive like a free manhole installation, which is more safe for the child and the and can have a, in few minutes, it's not a time taking process, so these kind of technologies we can use. And also like uh, we, uh, we think of it like uh, for the small areas where their roads are narrow and the septic tanks are not much accessible, then we like the idea of the small truck to the big trucks. Although it's like a little bit time, more time taking process, but it's, it would be good to ignore the completely these kind of thing, it's better to do something which is more practical and doable. So with the small truck to transfer to the big truck, this idea we really like it. And then also we think like, okay, regarding the treatment technologies, start with the simple technologies, not go for the higher end and uh, too much complicated 
technologies where you need to spend a lot of money for the consultation and the operation and maintenance. So, some kind of technologies like a constructed backlab. So the, these kind of technology is easy to handle. And uh, so the main <coughs> overall thing, like think simple and go then for the bigger one. That is the main idea which we like. <laughs> morning we know about the eight technologies yeah eight or nine I, I listed eight but it may be nine yeah sorry and we talk a lot about this uh, all technologies mainly we think the problem starts with the home the problem will start with the home means the problem is start with the septic tank then we need to improve the septic tank first. And for this, biodigester will be the best, if we can do. Yeah? <laughs> then we come into the conclusion. And then after, like the other team says, this for the further treatment. But, but I would like to add that biodigester is recently emerging and we need to do some research for the effluent and sediment, what will happen with the sediment, how much is. But the promoters of this biodigester, they are telling that um, uh, maintenance free, I think that cannot be maintenance free. Then, that, that may be minimum maintenance, but it cannot be maintenance free. But what will be the maintenance, what will be the, yeah, that we decided, yeah. our team decided, not only me, yeah. <laughs> Think. Okay, next thing. In our case, our CEO was very, very clear right from the beginning. So the case is like this, that I have a very limited land. I have a very limited budget. I want to fulfill all the requirements of PCB. And... Uh, Let's see what it is uh, uh, applicable to this in order to meet all these things. So the, the table discussed more on the technology options, considering uh, all the options which was discussed from the morning till now. Uh, also the team spent also a good time on uh, estimating the treatment capacity. So the sludge uh, accumulation, sludge generation, estimation of sludge at the end uh, determines what is what should be the treatment capacity. So a good discussion has happened, and uh, 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 the CEO has a has a the convincing number there. So uh, so we will go ahead with that uh, uh, for establishing the treatment capacity. Uh, and and with respect to the uh, different treatment option, uh, there were several uh, the treatment options were discussed. Uh, considering different parameters like uh, uh, the, the, the treatment efficiency, the, the land requirement and all those things. So we were able to, uh, we were able to figure it out that uh, the, the planted drying bed may be an option, but uh, still that also has uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, pros and cons. So at the end, uh, only we were able to discuss up to that, but uh, still uh, we have not made any conclusion that we will go for so and so uh, a treatment plan. So uh, the, the, the discussion was also held at the end and uh, we concluded also that the, the, the actual treatment concept can be finalized only with respect to the local situation there. Thank you very much. of the city is 1,50,000 and uh, assume that the area is of around 80,000 square kilometers, 80 square, 80 square kilometers and which means the density of population is around 1,800, 1,800. But here we have a split up on containment types and access to toilet types. First we, have, we had a initial break up of access, accessibility to toilets that says 
80 percent uh, will have individual toilets and 15 are catered by community and public toilets and 5 percent is going for open defecation. Uh, and under this 80 percent, around 60 percent of population is having soap pit kind of system, uh, pit kind of system and 40 percent are catered with a uh, CC rate system. Uh, then uh, for this 40 percent we have given there is we have assumed that there is an already uh, functioning FSTP to a 60 percentage level uh, that means which is based on the population uh, forecasting and uh, remaining 60 percent who is residing in the very urban area uh, are morally fond of like uh, 30 uh, 30 percent soap pits and 30 percent uh, uh, having septic tanks. So we couldn't uh, assume that uh, what kind of, either we can go for a sewerage system or a hauling system. <coughs> like, but uh, considering the distances, uh, area calculation, the sewerage system is not possible. Uh, so uh, the decision will be depending upon... Yeah, the, decision will be, the decision will be depending upon the uh, authorities of city. So this city authorities will be uh, from different different, different apartment, sorry, departments and uh, they will be uh, given definite roles and responsibilities. And these uh, authorities will decide uh, with the consultation with uh, the city engineers uh, depending upon the data available on demography, meteorological data, geological data to site, uh, to select the site which is possible to construct a decentralized system. And, and based on the uh, site conditions, the treatment options will be decided. So under which we have uh, decided that co-composting or lime uh, stabilization uh, will be the best option for this kind of largely spread area and where the more where more population is said to be moving into the peri-urban from the rural side. So this is our conclusion. Okay, thank you. So we had uh, many suggestions regarding the technology options. Uh, first, my city, uh, we had uh, jotted down some uh, priorities. Uh, first, <coughs> so uh, we uh, considered uh, First, if you can address uh, um, the land constraint, uh, if there is no constraint in the uh, land uh, allocation, then we can uh, go ahead. We also consider the financial constraint of the people if they can afford uh, the technology systems because we will be considering the per capita income of the population, the type of household that we are covering, uh, like uh, slum areas or uh, uh, the urban areas. And then we also be surveying on types of containment the people are uh, going to use and the uh, uh, end use option also. If uh, uh, we are, we'll also be uh, uh, contacting with the agricultural uh, sector if they can use uh, the fecal sludge, the treated sludge, and co compost it and use it as a soil conditioner or not. Then we also consider the topology of the uh, area, uh, whether uh, it is uh, having uh, flood uh, problems or not. Then also we have also considered the uh, operation and maintenance uh, aspect because after we have constructed the um, uh, plant, whether it is going to sustain, uh, whether uh, the uh, load uh, the load is coming uh, on a regular basis and uh, if we have the expertise uh, to uh, run the uh, plant. Uh, then um, lastly, we will also be creating awareness among the uh, stakeholders and the government officials so that uh, they, can, uh, they can contribute to the whole system and uh, make it a success uh, for uh, choosing a technology options. Okay. Uh, we also, uh, the, primary, the first thing that came in was the PCB standards. Those standards have to be always kept in mind before finalizing the technology. Okay. Thank you. I'm appointed as the chief officer. Very good. Without election. <laughs> Instead of going for any generic city, it, uh, we as a 
group decided to go for a specific city. As uh, there is a data uh, being worked with one of, one of the city in Maharashtra, that is Mahabaleshwar. It is a hill station. It's a unique case. The population is 1 lakh. Floating population throughout the year is 10 lakh. Um, it's a hill area, high rainfall, maximum rainfall basically in Maharashtra and uh, having five rivers originate from that place. But still there is a scarcity from December. Around, uh, as a council, there is a less area available in forest area covered. Uh, so, uh, we discussed with the options since morning. It was given and there are technologist approach to the council with uh, various options like uh, biodigesters and uh, but see, there is a problem of low temperature in that city being a, so anaerobic reaction and it's a challenge being a, a low temperature. So uh, we decided to go with the planted gravel filter. Uh, yes, there was one point discussed that during high rainfall area, it is having a good uh, advantage. Uh, one thing is decided basically in Mahabaleshwar town, that there are big resorts having strawberry farmhouses. So council has already made mandatory for having their own treatment system in the farmhouse and use it for strawberry farm, uh, farms. Uh, it is a question uh, for the uh, city area, small uh, accommodations, there is a sewer line and already one STP. Uh, the challenge is for small uh, hotels and uh, small uh, resorts. They don't have, that STP is there, but uh, no collection system. So the collection system will be set for these houses and also there are bungalows in the rooms which are given during the peak season. So it's a big shock load. That is a challenge. So it is said to have a planted gravel filter system. Basically, um, the existing STP also can be used and there will be additional planted gravel system. Uh, for this being a green area. Okay. Okay. Yeah, good, good afternoon. Uh, in our group, uh, we discussed a lot on uh, basic uh, data which is available with us and which is required because ground reality we discussed uh, and as a uh, training institute, we have some uh, uh, sharing of experiences from some municipal sanitary inspectors that in some cases uh, there is a septage flow as along uh, as it is flow in some cases they put it into the pit and put some room or soil above that some cases they uh, just uh, dispose of to the open land and sun takes the care so likewise so and uh, some, uh, in the discussion, some points have came that uh, the safety or fecal sludge quality which we have uh, observed is not uh, of the same. Somewhere they don't know that it should be disluge in winter, one year or two year or three years. Some uh, septic tanks were have very hard, that sludge has become a stone. So likewise, the quality of sludge is not there. Even though if you want to evacuate the sludge, then uh, train uh, well equipped people are also not available with the municipal conscience and uh, how many septic tanks are and all such things this quality of the safety so this uh, basic data we discussed much more on this side but uh, as a uh, topic given to the discussion which uh, technology so uh, we decided uh, finally we have all the data but on which ground we should finalize what are data we have as per analyzed data and all tested. Uh, then we uh, pointed out in, uh, unanimously that first we have, we have to dispose or treat this safety that land should be available, ample land should be available, ample funds should be available, well trained, well equipped uh, staff should be required. Other than all the technologies will not serve. You can choose any technology but until uh, this support, you cannot select. So we decided that awareness among the municipal authorities and uh, general people is most required on all these aspects. And so we have not decided 
to go for any particular treatment technology. Thank you. Okay. I am a consultant. <laughs> I think this was quite good, at least you had a chance to reflect on what you heard and then use it in the context. Since, the, like the last group, many other groups said they could not decide on what technology to adopt. Amongst us there are various technology providers. So let's hear from them about what kind of technology they have. and. Although they don't have a ready market of 12 city offices, but at least each of us who are working with some cities or with the state governments or national government will then pass on the message to them. So we'll shift to some of this provision unless there is some overriding question on what you have heard from all these eight tables. Any burning questions, anything that you think was high, to be highlighted, which did not get highlighted or something. Yes, just shout from there. Uh, good afternoon. The basic uh, and the most important question that uh, you know, some of the CDD presentation had about the cost and the maintenance cost and etc. So any technology that we choose, you know, the most important parameter is, uh, you know, the basic policy has to be in place, the willingness of the corporation, you know, and the people behind, second team. Third and most important is the financial budget and what kind of ROI. See, let me tell you why I am talking like on this particular issue because I come from a financial strategy background. And most of the projects that happen in India, people are not serious about from where the money will come, how the money will be returned, and how the return on investment will be generated. Because you can't run any program on deficit financing for years. And that is how the government has been running for so many years. So let us, you know, also try and address the issue of, you know, financial return criteria for anybody who is putting up the project, even the contractor who is putting it. Is he able to get reasonable return? Or because he is not able to get reasonable return, he will do something you know, which will make the system uh, collapse over a period of time. So I think financial criteria should be a main theme of all the discussions. And I would like to end this uh, you know, uh, little uh, speech of mine by giving you an example. Pune International Centre had uh, called for a, uh, you know, a discussion from Varun Gandhi. And after his speech, you know, there are so many questions put up to him. I asked him one simple question, ki how serious are politicians about financial literacy? You know, and he was stunned by the question and he said, boss, not at all. So the, my question is being answered, you know, in, in our the, the real, uh, you know, problem or the solution lies in ability of the people to understand the financial return criteria also, which supplements the technology part and the willingness part. Okay, Rajiv. Am I audible? Yeah. So, uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Rajiv Khair. I represent uh, Sara Plast and uh, Free S India. We are a private company uh, based in uh, headquartered in Pune. And we've been working in this space of portable sanitation and septage management for the last 17 years. Uh, we're, uh, uh, we're, a, we're a commercial uh, social enterprise and we've been, uh, uh, we've been a profitable entity since a long time. We've been invested by private equity and we've scaled to about uh, 10 cities, uh, 10 states at this point of time. We're raising more capital and we're growing. Uh, we have uh, associations with uh, multiple uh, companies whether it's technology or uh, uh, product support. Uh, to give you a quick background, we, uh, we manufacture portable sanitation products and we also service and clean them. So the cleaning, evacuation, disposal is all done by us. 
we also do a lot of uh, septage management in all the cities that we work in. So whether it's construction sites, uh, domestic uh, septage, or uh, even municipal. Uh, in my experience, uh, what I have uh, put together over here is basically a systematic commercialization of uh, fecal sludge and using technology and science. So I have quickly browsed through it, but uh, I would prefer to just have a, a dialogue with you regarding certain areas which I, on a practical level, feel very strongly about. And uh, there were some discussions that uh, that I heard, overheard when I just got, got in, which I would like to uh, probably take forward, which are very crucial in terms of the overall agenda that we are speaking about over here in this successful execution of uh, fecal sludge. So, uh, as you can see, uh, that's a typical septic tank and Rajesh was discussing earlier about, you know, which is the liquid layer, what is the solid layer, what's the problem, what's not the problem. So, as you all know that, you know, in a septic tank, uh, that's what gets pumped out. And uh, so we work with, with a lot of raw sewage, we also work with septage. So, when we work with septage, it's a lot easier to discharge, it's a lot easier to dispose of. Uh, the only challenge is the settling tank. And that's the only challenge. Uh, when it comes to raw sewage, uh, the challenge again is also settling, but the other challenge is time. Because, you know, when you pump out raw sewage, the normal BOD is somewhere close to about 11,000, 11,000, 12,000. But if you let it settle for 48 hours, it goes down to about 300. Now, you already have now a possibility of treating that a lot faster. Now, this happens. Uh, now, bigger challenge is when you have large amount of sewage coming in, you need to have larger sludge grind beds or you need to have larger settling tanks. And that's a space restriction and especially in big cities and big areas, it's always very challenging to really find space to find that settling. And therefore, we have all these treatment systems and plants and things like that. Very honestly, I like to say they love to complicate the sewerage system. But uh, I think I've had several discussions with, uh, with CDD and uh, with all my friends uh, in the industry over the last many, many years. And my my simple logic to this is that try and keep it as simple as possible and it works. Uh, so what have we done in terms of technology to try and mitigate the overall challenges that are that are there? So the idea is how to bring about how to bring about the whole uh, the, how to work in an ecosystem. Today it's very, very sporadic. So you have literally like the lone rangers who are going out collecting sewage and dumping it in various locations. So we want to avoid that. And I think one of the challenges today is, let's say, let's take a case study is Sinhar. So if you take Sinhar as a case study, then how do you put things together? It's a small municipality. The requirement is maybe two to three sewage trucks for the entire city uh, to be run over a period of one year. There are about 4,000 uh, households that need to be pumped. So if you take a location like that and you want to uh, you want to regularize and bring it all under one roof and make sure that the sewerage is not discharged to the river or not discharged to a farm. And uh, I, my personal suggestion is that A, you need to first regulate the vehicles and then B, you need to regulate the disposal mechanism. Starting point, instead of setting up a huge treatment plant and investing probably, I don't know, XYZ on it, I recommend that we should seriously look at using sludge tank beds. That's I feel is a very good technology to start with. It's a good startup technology. Then you can move on from there into other newer technologies or into more complex, more expensive technologies once you have an idea of the volume. And this needs to be done at, in the scaling process, this needs to be done at every city, at every town. You cannot just, there's no one size or one system that fits all. Every location has different dynamics, the temperatures are different, and all that changes in time. And since we work in about 10 states at different attitudes and different uh, locations, we see these challenges on a regular basis. So, uh, you tag the vehicles, you tag the tanks, you make sure that the waste is moving from point A to point B in the most effective manner, make sure it doesn't spill, make sure it reaches the right point. Uh, the other idea is how do you regulate pricing? So, as per our, as per our assessment, anywhere between 35 paise to 60 paise per litre. And that again depends upon the disposal point. But it cannot be more than this. There have been several cases we've seen where a person is ignorant about the charges and would end up paying even one rupee or two rupee per litre for sewage, for sewage disposal. And that's prohibitive. Uh, so we need to first you know, regulate all these things. Now, techn technology application. We've made an app, which is like Uber. So that app, I've called it Super, right? And uh, it's for sewage, it's a Super app. Now, this Super app will will regulate the industry for all these vehicles that are flying and make sure that the process for disposal. So the whole idea 
is based on all this sewage going into the right place for discharge, for disposal. And uh, like we discussed in Bangalore last time, uh, at Devan Halli you have a plant, a small plant which CTD has put up. If there are similar plants like that where the cost of operation is low, you can have several such plants per India and you can have this waste coming into these locations, they could be private and it could be a phenomenal business model that can be put into place. So the challenge is how do we create that. So this is just an example, a picture of uh, you know the, the RFID mechanism, whether it's coming from household or portable toilets, community toilets, or whether it's coming, coming from commercial setting, it's going towards a such drying bed. And that's really just the, the concept of putting it together. So in phase one, like I mentioned, sludge drying bed, and then of course proper documentation going to the customer, making sure that uh, you know you are environmentally making sure the waste is going to the right disposal point. And then as phase two, you have an improved treatment facility, you can go for a rewards mechanism, or then if you have the money, then you can keep expanding and making it into a newer, better, more high-tech kind of a mechanism. But I think the reward system works really well. It, it's it's really good. We have we own one in uh, uh, in Patna, and it's. Uh, I've used it, I've used one in Patna, I've used, checked it out in different locations, it's really, really, really works. Uh, I won't talk about DWATS, I'm sure Rajesh, you've spoken about DWATS, and uh, I think most of us know what the word DWATS is, so I don't want to spend too much of time on it, but uh, I think in terms of cost, uh, the DWATS system, uh, initial cost might be a little, uh, little high in terms of space and stuff like that. But overall, in terms of operation and maintenance, uh, I highly recommend it. It's, it's a great system to go back. We've used it, and I can tell you it works. Uh, what what happens with all this together is that the entire fecal sludge management industry will get regulated. The whole idea is to bring it under one uh, regulatory. But right now, there is no regulation. We're trying to fight and bring in regulation. There's one school of thought which says that it's okay to discharge it into the fields. There's one school of thought which says that we need to discharge it only into a treatment plant. So, you know, I have my friends in Bangalore who uh, vociferously say that it's okay to discharge in a field. And uh, I have other friends who would say that, oh, no, 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 we need a sewage treatment plant. So, I don't know which one is right and which one is wrong, but I think ethically we need to discharge it where people don't fall sick. And that's why fecal sludge management, uh, you know, coming under the regulation of septic, safe septic disposal is crucial. We need to create incentives for, uh, for disposal. So, the business model must have the entrepreneurs becoming stakeholders of the city. I'll give you a quick example. In the city of Pune recently, what we did was we, uh, uh, this is not connected to separate directly, but it is about toilets and you, know, you can just get an idea of, uh, since we are talking about uh, CEOs and about uh, you know, municipalities and urban local bodies as well as uh, communities. You know, in the city of Pune, what we did very recently is uh, we got uh, scrap buses from the municipal corporation. Uh, Buses were about average 13 years old, completely scrapped. All these buses uh, were going to be discharged, like scrapped and thrown away. We had a discussion with the municipal commissioner, and together we came out to the conclusion that if all the stakeholders are engaged, we can actually convert all these buses which are going to be thrown away into very high end toilets for women. So, what we did was one of the stakeholders being the municipal corporation, the other one being the uh, uh, the, uh, the corporate, uh, the, the uh, service company which is ours, a corporate which was going to fund it in terms of CSR because it fitted into the domain of CSR and the people of the city. It's going to benefit everyone. The money is not going for the municipal corporation, the corporate is benefiting from it, we are looking after the service, we have the OPEX capex taken care of. It's a very well oiled kind of a system, revenue being generated by uh, by advertising. So this worked with an example and I don't see any reason why a model in septage management with the same thing in mind when all the stakeholders come together and create a model like this super app will terrifically work well for the betterment of, uh, of the regional area. Uh, we did, somebody spoke about BIC, so we worked very closely with BIC and uh, created a standard. We created a standard for disposal for uh, based from toilets and also from septage, we created an entire policy document, a white paper, and we presented it to the uh, sanitation then sanitation minister and the principal secretary, Mr. Mishra, and you know, with uh, multiple people, Dr. Mashir Gavri at the helm of uh, affairs. And it was a phenomenal document that we put together with a lot of details. I'm happy to share that with uh, with any of you wanting that document. I can send you that uh, uh, PDF. So what I'm trying to say here is that uh, in in this particular space. We're not only talking about municipalities, we're also talking about private entities 
companies coming together to create an entrepreneurial buzz. That's really what my message over here is. That's why I'm here. I want everyone to sort of take this message home that we can create very, very profitable businesses out of uh, of septage and out of uh, sanitation. And uh, with this Swachh Bharat Abhiyan, this could be a great step going forward. So I know that technologies are available plenty, but this could be a great bridge to bring those technologies together and create a, a profitable business plan. Thank you. Yeah, so you have any questions? Okay, three questions. Uh, thanks, Rajiv, for the <coughs> presentation. But essentially, I had a discussion with Yogesh during one of our yeah. meetings in Sinha. You also have some kind of septage package treatment plan, right? Yeah. Can you elaborate on that, that which technology and whether it can change? Yeah, so basically, it's not no rocket science. Septage treatment plan is basically a CDI, uh, a CDD system, and it's coupled with a uh, with a tertiary treatment plan just to re reduce your BOD from 200 to maybe. I don't know, 60 and 70, which becomes more suitable for discharge into your system. So that's, it's, it's a simple sand filter. Simple. Yeah, it's a normal pressure vessel and sand filter that will bring down your BOD. Okay, thanks. Yes, regarding this, yes, app, uh, Okay, nice to meet Hello. <laughs> so this app, uh, is it like uh, similar to Uber? I mean, people can uh, just access it and uh, get a service? Because exactly like Uber. Because uh, my uh, my next uh, question is uh, the kind of uh, reuse uh, sorry the desilting practice in India we see that people do it three four years so what what is the kind of frequency and you know number of app download and uh, daily usage it will have in a city uh, given that you have like uh, I'll take an example of there are two trucks doing one desilting so why we need an app yeah so uh, that's a very pertinent question I mean. I do agree that you need to clean your septic tank once in five years or three years. Why would you want to use an app for that? So the app is not only for uh, for sewage. We are also using it for utilities like water. So every city has a scarcity of water, this problem of water. So you need a water tanker. These are all certified water tankers that will provide you water from the municipal corporation certified that this is water not from a well but from a assigned point given by the municipal corporation. So that's just one of the ideas. There would be several other utilities that could be a part of the Uber, the sewer plan, and uh, we we want to integrate all that with the system. So to start with, I can only think about shit anyway because I've been doing shit for the last 17 years. So I started with shit, but I like to integrate all the facilities and utilities that go with that. Oh, not many more. Okay, we'll take one from that table, and then one here. Since you are talking of Uber, and what is your sort of take on a more uh, introducing a more scheduled service uh, by the local authority. So local authority gets into a contract with a private guy, uh, one or more zones of the city and things like that, but more through a contract of that type. So it's still private, but through a scheduled service in a, with a contract, which is very different than Uber where you have all these private guys and you know the whole thing is uh, yeah, so functioning very So the idea is to create, so there's, a, there's this, this demand supply gap needs to be closed. So if you see today, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, I won't call it harassment, there's a lot of, uh, you know, when you order a truck to come and clean your septage, I don't know, but the guy will come and charge you some ridiculous amount. And most people in India are like, okay, this is, this is, this is the tank, there's a whole lot of crap in it, it needs to be removed. And I'm willing to pay 2,000 rupees or whatever, it's just take it away. They don't even want to go and check whether it's clean properly. Like Rajesh was saying that the bottom layer of, of sludge is, the, is, like, is like concrete. To, to really get rid of it and take it out, you need a broader to actually break it. You need to put keep water in it, you need, need that to sort of become into a slurry, homogenize, and then suck it back again. It, if you ask me, it takes two days for that. So the guy needs to come and inspect your tank. Nobody even wants to open it. So the idea is that if you have a professional demand supply situation created where there is a whole very, uh, you know, like a challenging atmosphere for competition and service levels are pushed higher, then it becomes so much easier. Whereas when it becomes contractual, then it's like, okay, this is the guy you need to talk to, he charge 700 rupees for it, scheduled is on the 5th of December. But schedule, no, is, schedule is no actual charge to be paid by the, at the time of cleaning. Uh, I didn't get you, sorry, what? So, Scheduled when it is with a contract with a private guy. Yeah. The private guy is paid by the local government. 
because so, of the contractual arrangement for so the... I, I, I'm against the local government paying for private sewage. Why should the local government pay for private sewage? Okay, no, we, can, sir, we can... We can, we can, we can discuss time. later, we can but yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, and final question from... Uh, sorry. Uh, so, Rajiv, based on, you know, our uh, experience of talking to a lot of utility companies, what we have observed yeah. uh, as a company is that uh, the interest that utility companies have in taking up the mandate of FSM, you know, operating FSM plants or, you know, managing the successful empty is very low. Um, so, question is that what would it take for a company like Sara Plast to enter into this segment, uh, take care of uh, the FSTP operations if not setting up and also, you know, managing the emptying and transport. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Open to it. But uh, very honestly, the reason why people are not getting into it because there's a lack of uh, there's a lack of professionalism and a lack of experience in this space. There are not that many professionals in this space who like to say, okay, I've done this for so many years and I can do it. Secondly, there's a huge stigma that's associated with sanitation and waste. So there are a lot of people who might want to do it, but because it's to deal with shit, they don't want to be a part of it. So the biggest, uh, let's say, barrier to entry is stigma. So if we can get like a skill set sort of a school which has a course, don't call it a shit cleaning thing, but you call it plumbing maybe, we might be able to change it. So it's a lot of mindset and uh, awareness building that will be required. So it's not going to change over time. Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Thank you very much. Good afternoon everybody, my name is Nisikan, I am from BSA Corporation Limited, Pune. Today we are here to discuss uh, various solutions for safety as management. Now I am here with the 100% eco-friendly, most economical and uh, biodegradable solution called bad, uh, Master Biotech. First of all, uh, I would like to introduce uh, my company. Uh, we are working as a group named uh, BSA Group, which involves mainly in the industry, uh, mainly in automotive uh, components, manufacturing automotive components, uh, staffing services, facility management, skill development. Uh, since 2012, we have started a new division called uh, Health and Hygiene Division. Uh, by the end of which, we engaged in promoting and developing innovative uh, environmental uh, technology product and services for uh, human waste management and wastewater management. Our product which uh, we have already uh, suggested to set uh, in our previous meeting is Master Biotech, uh, which is totally based on biodiesel technology which has been developed by DRDO. Uh, now, I will describe how this technology works. As we know, the human excreta is in form of fats, protein and cellulose. There are uh, four stages by dint of which inoculums, the bacteria which uh, used for digesting the human excreta is called inoculum. This is a consortia of uh, four bacteria. First one is hydrolytic, second one is acidogenic, third one is acidogenic and fourth and final one is methanogens. At first stage, hydrolytic bacteria cuts rapidly all big molecules in the fragments and dissolved polymers. Second stage is uh, esodegenic, where uh, fragments and dissolved polymers are 
converted into H2CO2 organic acid, acetate and alcohol. Third one is acetogenic, where all this converted into acetate and final and most important bacteria is methanogens, which converts all into treated water and methane gas. Here methane gas is, uh, maximum, is in maximum uh, volume. This is a symbolic a schematic diagram uh, or master bar tank. As we are discussing uh, that the collected uh, uh, sewage uh, will be dumped into the collection tank where uh, a net uh, will be provided which will work to segregate unwanted item with uh, entering into the tank like uh, plastic bottles, brick uh, and other. Uh, and we have uh, used the gravitational slope concept of uh, to come your uh, sludge into the tank. Conclusion Master Bio Tank uh, is an eco friendly sewerage system designed by DRDO and its CPCB standard, PCB standards. Replacement of STP. The reduction in load of existing STP by 70%. If uh, this technology put at individual household le level, then there is no need of any type of STP. If there is existing STP and if we use this technology between septic tank and STP, then uh, load of STP will be reduced up to 70%. The most efficient economic sewerage system designed so far, conversion of water by almost 90%, which is reusable. We also reuse uh, water coming out from biodiester in uh, Ranchi. Uh, with support of uh, funded by UNICEF. Uh, no major maintenance required, so almost maintenance free. No operating cost, no external energy or power required. The design life of biodiester is minimum 40 years with one time bacteria fill and continued working further as bacterial multiplication takes place inside. As bacteria inoculum uh, use human excreta as their fit, hence uh, multiply within the time. Methane and treated water as a byproduct, this can be further used as energy resources. Now, I would like to suggest uh, three concepts by using this technology. This will reduce the whole thing uh, as we are discussing a, a lot of amount which will be uh, invested for developing uh, several type of, uh, type of system. The first one is, which I earlier uh, described, that we uh, construct a master bio tank at a centralized place where uh, collection uh, collect, uh, collection truck will be arrived and dump the sewage in the collection tank. Further, that sewage will be entered into bio tank where by uh, using inoculum biodegradation it will be treated and uh, treated water comes out. It can be further used as uh, agriculture for agriculture yeah, for flushing system. The second one is uh, uh, sorry, first one will include the transportation cost from septic tank and to the master bio tank. Second one is uh, we can construct it uh, on distributed system basis. Suppose we can group 200 or 100 uh, villages around and make a biodiester tank, master biodiester tank over there, connect all the household through a drain line so that uh, direct intake from the household to the uh, master garden. In, that, in this case, we can reduce transportation cost also. If we see uh, the cost which will occur in placing drainage system will be comparatively low if we we'll, uh, calculate the whole operating and uh, maintenance cost per year, then it will be comparatively very low. And third one is the best solution make biodiester tank at every individual household, then there will no need of transportation cost, drainage cost, kisi cheez ki jorurat nahi hai. Har ghar mein biodiester bana ke place kar dijiye, sara problem khatam hoi pe, kuch aage ki jorurat nahi hai. Dusri cheez, abhi uh, now somebody asked that some report are coming that 
doesn't work. I have uh, several cases. Is uh, there was some problem in railways where many people drop something unwanted items within the tank. But railway has also overcome this problem by using a trapping system within the biaster tank. Uh, till now, we have uh, constructed more than thousand tanks, individual level household or community tank or uh, public bio tank. There, uh, they all are working very well. We also submitted uh, reports of water quality for all related tanks. Thank you. If any question, you can ask. Okay. Questions? Plenty. You have mentioned that the 70% uh, reduction of the yes. dependencies, uh, STPs, or etc. Yes, yes. I just wanted to ask you how. Uh, would you, if, if the household level septic tank, existing septic tanks to be converted into the bio tank, mm -hmm. what would be the cost of that and the, how it is a bit difficult? Or the main difficulty is that uh, the cleanliness of tank. The whole tank must be cleaned before converting it into a bio tank because no one will work inside the tank if there will be sludge or sewage inside the tank. Uh, that uh, cost depend upon the size of existing tank. Uh, we can't say, uh, say first we do survey what is the size and what is the requirement, what is number of users. This technology is mainly based on number of users. Uh, and you know Coulomb's use is mainly two types. First one is who works from 0 degree Celsius up to 60 degree Celsius and second one is which works below zero degree Celsius, which are using in CRT in glacier cities like Kathmandu, we can use that in Apollo. So then there is uh, no problem with temperature. Uh, some uh, madam just asked in Mahabaleswar there is temperature problem. There is no issue with this technology. As Mahabaleswar got temperature to zero Celsius. Okay. Uh, so my question is. Since in your system you don't have a you know solid liquid separation unit, yes. right? Yes. And yours is basically a bio uh, biodegradation unit. Yes. So what happens if there is a lot of uh, solids which are coming into your system? Will that choke your system? How do you handle that? Yeah, actually, we design the system as per users. If in future there will be any type of increment in users, we assume that at the time of construction. And there is no problem with mix up uh, if uh, uh, solid and liquid mix and then come into tank. Then there is no problem. I mean, if, if the TS in the say say in the in sewage or whatever is coming into no the need. Uh, if, if TS is very high, then how does your system handle it? Actually, whatever we do, whatever we do, actually there is no need to segregate liquid and solid part. The con technology concept is that there is no need to segregate liquid and solid part. This trick, uh, the all slurs, uh, which come in terms of liquid and solid both directly. No need to segregate solid and liquid. Okay. Yes. So what is the cost for one household, first question, and uh, second question is uh, uh, how frequently you uh, clean it, like, uh, I mean, operation when diesel is it, how frequently does it, uh, do you do it for a, like in, in generic case? No need to regret. Kavi evacuation ki jarurat nahi hai, because there is no generation of sludge and slurry. Sludge or slurry septic tank with you, Mamta. But what is the cost of... Yeah, by household cost, if you go with a precast model, then it will be around 26 or 27,000 per household. Uh, if uh, there will be order in bulk, we can do it uh, around uh, 23 or 24. With bacteria. Uh, bacteria filling is one time. Bacteria use the human skeleton as their feed and or multiply, multiplying purpose. But no desilaging never? No need to recharge again. For 40 years? Minimum 40 years. One bacterial life, one time when bacteria is in the status, it will be 40 years. After 40 years, if it is replenished, then it will 
मैं सर पर्टिकुलर इस टेक्नोलॉजी के बारे में बात कर रहा हूँ मुझे डीआरडीओ के लिटरेचर में बताया गया है चालीस साल का कोई बैक्टीरिया नहीं होता बैक्टीरिया का लाइफ बहुत ही कम होता है फ्यू सेकेंड मिनट और हार्स तो बताया होगा बैक्टीरिया in consorsia as we as i said there are four type of bacteria first a stage hydrolytic bacteria works where it cuts rapidly big molecules into small fragments dissolved fragments that's why sludgeon slurry doesn't generate and in adverse condition if suppose now temperature is 20 degrees celsius and sudden it downs to 0 degree 1 degree 2 degree in that case might be some sludge or slurry generation may be occurred but wait it when it comes to again 20 degrees celsius the uh, proper functioning will be regained okay fine yes. uh, 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 this has been sort of operational in many places so has there any uh, have there any studies been made in terms of actual performance on the ground and is this documented available yeah uh, we have done a study at our jagar uh, site jharkhand where we have constructed a uh, tank this type of tank uh, uh, for uh, one and a half hour i didn't mean only the tank also the toilets yes by digester toilets no, uh, there are some uh, there is some uh, awareness problem especially especially in rural rural areas where uh, normally people use uh, direct acid to clean their tank that is prohibited for the system mainly uh, lack of awareness we are trying to aware them wherever we install this type of technology or tank we arrange a normal one day uh, training session how can we use this technology and what should be do's and don'ts okay final this uh, bacteria you are using is yes, consortium of bacteria it consumes the fecal matter and grow the nose what happens to that bacteria whether it is coming along with the flood water no, no. inside the tank there is provision of immobilization mat actually uh, the topic is septic management that's why i uh, didn't uh, present the main technology now i am saying uh, there is provision of immobilization matrix uh, this is used to stop the bacterial wash out and as a colony to generate colony for bacteria as a human human nature is there ki if there is a high temperature we all uh, are want to come inside place where uh, we feel cold uh, just like that immobilization uh, matrix uh, form a colony where bacteria could rest or in case when, uh, when uh, there is a uh, big flow of water yeah uh, fast flow of water no i can i can tell you i have a presentation from the drdo person it says that uh, consortium of uh, bacteria fish uh, uh, virus also part of that consortium that uh, inoculum okay, okay. some bacteria fish virus also there i know uh, if i have anyway uh, so it I kills that bacteria no no जो मैं समझ गया आप मेरे को उस डीआरडीओ को पर्सन का नाम बताइएगा ऐसा कुछ ह्यूमर नहीं है सो इट्स नॉट दैट इन्फ्लुएंस वाटर इज नॉट हैविंग एनी बैक्टीरियल काउंट और एनी एनीथिंग लाइक दैट व्हिच अफेक्ट्स इट नहीं नहीं इन द केस सॉरी गो अहेड एंड देन ओके इन द केस ऑफ कोल्डनेस द रिएक्टिविटी ऑफ बैक्टीरिया गोस डाउन आई थिंक दिस क्वेश्चन इज दैट the water that leaves the tank do they have the bacteria or the woman ko bataya na ki mobilization mein dex use karte hai stop wash mein to maine pehle hi answer kar diya okay thank, thank you very much you see as we get more and more into technology you 
realize that septage management is actually rocket science. Uh, chemistry and biology. One more technology that is
post plan session maybe. <laughs>
first question. Second question is, do you make uh, dried sludge or is it like the fresh baker sludge out of uh, drugs for uh, the treatment? Okay. Uh, the OATEP cost, we are, uh, since we are now getting into the field evaluation, we are yet to do that. So, uh, what we envisage is that since the thermal heat, some thermal energy is self uh, satisfied within the system. So, it's only the additional uh, small component of power and the manpower requirement. So, that way the OATEP cost should be uh, reasonably lower. But then we'll, have, we'll tell that with more confidence in six months down the line. Uh, uh, the, the system can handle any organic waste. So what we have done, uh, so the studies so far has been carried out using the sewage sludge so that it's more a controlled environment. And now we are getting into the field and we are trying getting the septage. So uh, we are not working on the raw sewage per se, not like what we get from Sarah's uh, toilet, which is basically black water. We are not really uh, doing that, but uh, we can actually do that also. But right now we are looking at septage. Okay. So septage okay. is dry. Right sludge or septage is four percent solids, kind of. So we use solid part. So septic no, tank. No, we take septic tank. Septic so tank out the septage. I mean, uh, to set the definitions right. So anything which is coming out from a septic tank is septage. So whichever comes out, that is what we handle. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Can I ask? Rahul. Uh, so, so uh, in terms of the operation and maintenance, what kind of skill is required to run this plant as compared to other, if we talk about technologies, it doesn't seem to be too much of, you know, skill intent intensive in that sense. So, what kind of skill would be required to run this plant? See, most of the operations can be remotely managed. So, which means that even when, if, if, the, if the temperature in the paralyzer rises beyond a certain temperature, so we can automatically, the oxygen pumping would uh, in place. So most of the operations can be remotely managed and can also be automated. So what we envisage is that these units would typically be set up in a solid waste management uh, site. So the operator of the solid waste management site can also operate this. So that additional incentive is, uh, is the biochar which is coming out of this unit which he can mix it with his compost uh, from the MSW. And because biochar is a good water uh, absorber and nutrient absorber, so it adds, it increases the value of the, uh, the compost itself. So that way he can also distribute his operations first. Okay. Uh, my question is about like in this unit you don't have any screening part. So what will happen with the unwanted stuff which is coming with the septage? The entire uh, septage would enter uh, would enter our uh, dewatering unit. So all the solids which at the end of, end of the day, they are all getting burnt. So if at all we have any unwanted particle which is coming, we, we have a pre-collection uh, tank, but then even whatever escapes that and comes into the system would all get burnt. Uh, typically we had uh, issues with the sewage sludge which is coming from a sludge drying bed because uh, that used to come with the sand. And sand when we burn it at, in, uh, at about 500 degrees kind of temperature forms form clinker which used to choke our uh, the carburizer unit. But we do not envisage that from a septic because sand would really not be there if it is a septic tank of that. From a pit, yes, that issue would uh, come in. So we add additional biomass to <coughs> the baguettes. Uh, when we use that kind of uh, input, we added uh, raw biomass to make up for it and then run, run, run the uh, And my another question is, like you said, like it needs to be maintained at 500 degrees. So, how much power is required to maintain this temperature? It is, uh, initially we use some coal to uh, uh, initiate the temperature and then the sludge itself is continuously burning. So, it's, it's a self-maintained system. We don't need an external energy for this particular operation. Thank you. Okay, and the last question. Uh, is this a continuous process and can I switch, on, switch off, switch on? Is that possible? Well, we have operated it for 20 hours continuously. We have not done a 24 hour cycle yet. We have done 20 hour cycle and it's a, and then 20 hours, the temperature in the uh, carbonizer is still hot when we give a break of 4 hours and then uh, the switching on is, it takes about 15-20 minutes to achieve this kind of temperature. Uh, so, a related question, when you switch on, do you always require cool or then, you know, once the cycle? It's, it's cold. Uh, 
Okay, it, it handles about 10,000 liters of septage per day, distributed over 20 hours. Uh, assuming again, 95% uh, uh, moisture and 5% solids. Okay, so it's total power required is about 4 kilowatt energy. Uh, that's called uh, basically the dewatering is something which we still haven't really kind of mastered. Uh, we are still exploring what is the best option. So we envisage that there is an energy input which might be required for dewatering. So if we are looking at some options like the geo bag, we might not require any energy. So that's something which which we would be able to tell say six months from now. Geo bag expensive. Yeah, geo bag. No, more than the uh, dewatering itself, what you do with the water you know, coming from the dewatering step, I think that's going to be a bigger problem. Absolutely. I mean, the total water, when we are talking about uh, uh, 10,000 liters, we, are talking, we have over 9,500 liters of water. Just what do you do with that? So, that, uh, uh, what, what we envisage, we, are, we still have to figure out what we are going to do. But what we envisage is this water is. Uh, is pathogen free. We have it uh, taken care of, the pathogen part, because the heat energy is coming to the heat exchanger which will kill the pathogen part. And then this water can be uh, used, say, for a nursery, for instance, within the solid waste management. So for instance, when we visited Y, we saw that the, the, there's a possibility of having a nursery there, or there's somebody is actually also doing a nursery. So, so that kind of enterprise, entrepreneurial enterprise needs to be kind of set up. Okay. Great. Thanks a lot, Arun. Miles, I think this connects to from a bigger system to a toilet and roughly similar processes if I understand the <laughs> chemistry and the mechanics of your system. So.
have uh, technology partners in the U.S., Duke University and Colorado State uh, that are working with us. CSU is working on the combustion side. Duke is working on the liquid treatment side. Uh, and then here in India, working with a large team of working on the social science survey research, Segwa and Nirmont. Um, we're based in SEP, we've been partnering there. Uh, L&T uh, has been doing some value engineering on our system. Uh, working with Periware and Roca, the sanitary wear company, on a low flush uh, spark plate development, uh, as well as some supporting partners uh, on some of our other testing and technology work. So we've been at this about 18 months. Uh, first with the demonstration unit, um, and then we've taken that unit into a couple of stages. We call them alpha and beta in terms of how we're developing that technology. First, initially operating in very controlled conditions uh, at the SEP site, uh, and increasingly going to less controlled in terms of more continuous operations, uh, increasing the volume of users, uh, and expanding the testing uh, and the, the work that we're doing uh, with the processing accelerating the time of the treatment uh, process. So we've done this um, not only looking at the technology, but looking at the interface as well. So as I mentioned, we've, we've got a partnership with Periware and Roca, uh, where we developed a low flush squat plate. Uh, so we start with a low volume of water coming in. The squat plate uses 1.5 liters per flush, which is a huge improvement over the typical 8 to 9 liters per flush. So that's one of the key assumptions with our unit. We've got low volume water coming in, and we're managing that water within a closed loop system. We've also been doing a lot of work on the interface in terms of thinking about aspirational cabin design, uh, making that well lit, well ventilated, uh, odor free, uh, to the extent that we can manage that. Uh, we've also been addressing uh, Mr. Waste uh, access in terms of uh, pad access at the uh, site, but also dealing with disposal. So we're looking at incineration technologies uh, using our approach um, and again exploring that from a behavior and social aspect as to whether that uh, is workable and suitable uh, for various settings. So I'll dive into the technology. Um, so our system is currently sized for 50 users per day. And we're basically that built a waste processing unit underneath the toilet seat. Uh, so it's set up to be a public or shared application. So a school, a bus stop, uh, a train station, a shared community setting would be the ideal kind of situation. So the treatment is using a liquid chemical disinfection uh, for the liquid, and then a solid is being dried and turned into a fuel, a fuel pellet generating energy from that combustion process. I've got a short video I'll walk through here. So someone uses the toilet and the waste uh, drops underneath uh, and then it's separated. The solids go into a macerator or dewatering. It goes on to current version is a flat ring uh, where it is dried, turned into a chip or a pellet, uh, and that drops down into a, a cook stove gasifier. We're generating thermal energy from that combustion process. We use thermoelectric devices to then convert that thermal uh, into electrical that's stored in a car battery. At the same time, the liquid is being separated, goes into a three tank system, <coughs> capture disinfection using electrochemicals, and then stored, and that water is available for recycle or flushing. We're also exploring from a behavior and social acceptance standpoint whether that water could be used for uh, hand washing, for body wash. Um, we have excess water coming over the system once a week that would need to be discharged. Would that be suitable for irrigation? Would it be suitable for bike washing, hand washing, house cleaning uh, purposes? So we're very close to being energy neutral, um, provided we have plenty of solids coming in. Um, so our key ingredient is, is volume, uh, so that we, we 
have sufficient supply of solids coming in uh, so that we can generate that thermal energy, which then drives the system. Uh, we start the combustion process with a glow plug. Um, basic diesel engine glow plug that runs for about a minute and a half, and then we're just running off the fuel that we have generated. Uh, and we use the heat that we're generating as the drive, uh, and then that's also our source of future combustion. So we're looking uh, now for various applications and further sort of robust testing uh, of the prototype and the technology. We have a large contract now with the U.S. Army Research and Development. Um, where we are commissioning this technology to be on a mobile platform. Um, so they're looking for using it in forward operating bases where they have 75 to 100 troops out in the middle of nowhere with no sanitation solution. But one of their biggest challenges is uh, energy uh, and water uh, supply chain. 60% of the, the harm uh, for those troops is often as a result of that supply chain. So it's not only a sanitation issue, but it's also a financial you know, supply chain and security issue that they're trying to address through this off-grid sanitation solution. So from this work, we also see a lot of application of them using that mobile platform uh, for many other settings. So you can imagine a, a wedding ceremony or a national park or a forest tourism area uh, or construction site application could also use uh, that type of approach. So we're now, uh, as I mentioned, moving from this initial prototype uh, in North Carolina and the prototype at SEPT University to expanded sites. Uh, we're looking for sort of a variety of different applications in the coming year. We're looking for a school site, uh, a community setting, uh, a trucking or a bus depot kind of arrangement. Uh, a construction site is also an, an area where we're getting a lot of commercial uh, construction company interest in demonstrating the technology in that type of setting. So we're moving on from Ahmedabad to additional sites. Um, we're going to be in Kamatur probably in April or May uh, with a, a prototype there as part of the Gates Foundation focus on Kamalada. Uh, we're also making plans to go to Durban, South Africa uh, in, the, in the coming year as well. So the aim is to have another five sites, um, four of which would be in India, and then the one in South Africa uh, is sort of the robust testing, continuing to push the, the potential product development and platforms for this technology. I'll just close with a reference to our website. It's called thebettertoilet.org. Uh, so we have a lot of information about the technology available there. So also reports from our focus groups and survey research that we've done uh, are also available there. And we have a very active social media campaign where we're sharing information about thoughts uh, and technology developments. Thank you. Questions? Okay, uh, thank you very much, Miles. Uh, I just have a few observations on that the the school and the public garden, where the uh, because you mentioned that the pilot generation is your uh, becoming a thermal uh, because thermal energy act as thermal energy and which becomes the system as a new uh, the energy neutral. Okay, so uh, in schools and the public garden, where the uh, the solid uh, content would be uh, difficult to get enough quantity. So how would be it is possible to run uh, you know energy neutral? And the second question related to that, is there any provision where we can, you can put the additional uh, uh, I input as a thermal, uh, like a cow dung or a, right. so is it possible, is it? Very good questions and thank you for taking that up. Uh, so one of the things we are looking at is the application, if you're not at, connected to the grid of electricity, is a solar panel. So we a very small solar panel, 250 watt run for four to six hours, we, we think we can be very energy, very close to energy neutral, again, depending on the supplies of solids coming in. But it wouldn't take much uh, to add a solar panel of a very small size to help us close that gap. Uh, we are looking at uh, additional sort of sources of solids. Uh, our focus on menstrual hygiene management is one strategy uh, that's both aspirational and 
technically in the program uh, in the sense of generating potentially a fuel source uh, of additional solids through its incineration of, of selected products. Um, another is solid waste, uh, also a recycling kind of scheme where people are bringing solid waste to the system is, is quite feasible from our technology approach. It could be also a way of generating demand, generating cost recovery. Uh, and then also uh, food waste uh, could probably be included or, or cow dung and animal waste is certainly a feasible addition. Okay. Yes, one more question. Uh, the microns of uh, selling minimum 50 persons a day. Uh, 50 persons a day. So that's not at the household level? Correct. It's more at the community level? Correct. So uh, in terms of the maintenance, um, that would incur a cost, and uh, someone has to take up that responsibility as well. Right, right. So, uh, have we thought about it? We have, and that certainly goes, it goes into product development and business modeling aspects as well. Um, but the, the modules have been developed in a way to keep them fairly low tech. These are all sort of off the shelf parts. Maintenance is fairly uh, easy uh, in, our, in our scheme of development. Uh, so your typical local handyman you could be trained to manage it. Uh, we've estimated you know, the sort of maintenance uh, and parts replacement at less than $100 a month um, in our business models. Again, that's something we continue to have to test, and we're working hard to value engineer and continue to drive down those costs. But uh, we think it's certainly manageable uh, in the way that we're approaching it so far. OK. The way this uh, technology is presented, it seems as if it is automatic, you know, it's self-generating. One thing gets separated, then it gets heated. So is there any human interface in that, or is it something which is, uh, you know, generating on its own? And the second thing, this wastewater, which you are showing, can be used for hand washing. So it's a standard kind of a self-page kind of a system, which is, you know, releasing this water. So are you saying its quality is as good for hand washing uh, also in this process, which normally is not the case with sanitation and discharging? Yes, it is pathogen free, it's safe to touch, it's safe to reuse uh, in a number of applications. Uh, so it is safe for hand washing, body washing, clothes washing, those kinds of applications. <laughs> bigger challenge obviously is the social issue, social acceptance uh, of that particular in terms of the automation, uh, the system is automated in the current beta version. Uh, so it, it runs on electronic controls, um, and we can turn it on and off to process uh, for about 60 minutes to, to run the treatment of the liquid and run the development of, of the drying and development of the solid pellets. So that is automated. So unlike the biodigester, the RDO kind of a technology, you're saying it's equivalent to that without adding any new Correct. So, as the Kone, our the head of the Gates Foundation Technology Program, wants to say, the best fecal sludge management strategy is zero waste. And that's what we're adding. That's what they also said. So one of the key aspects is the aspirational design of this approach. Um, and our stakeholders in Africa are encouraging us not to go to a dry toilet, but to go for a flush toilet because that's aspirational. Um, we obviously have a transition from going from uh, the use of water in India to using paper uh, in South Africa or other applications in Africa. So that's one of our next big steps so in terms of testing them up that particular module. But we're not going for a dry toilet approach. Uh, one more question is about like, uh, as I see in your video, like it, it separates the solid and liquid at that moment. Uh, in case of like, uh, like diarrhea and all, then, then how it will be separated like 100% or like, uh, if like the person has diarrhea. Right. So then how it will be separated the solid and liquid? <laughs> 
So there won't be much solid, uh, so it'll be largely liquid. Um, and we obviously have to be prepared to, to manage that from a size um, and treatment process and time uh, strategy. We also would have to have sufficient solids batched and prepared in order to, to have the energy supply to run it. But again, that's, that's one of the scenarios we have built a system on we, we think we can manage. Okay, sorry. Uh, I don't mind. Yes. Uh, so, uh, but, uh, three questions. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> three for one. Uh, so, uh, I mean, is there any mechanism to deal with uh, uh, solid uh, or foreign contaminants entering into the system? Because that's some observation that we have or some our experience in Paranasi. The second is, how many times can the water be recirculated? And, uh, <laughs> And whether the, you know, when it is, you're saying it is pathogen free, uh, pathogen free, but does it also become odor uh, free and color also becomes like transparent, that looks like. And the last question is that when are you commercially launching this? <laughs> <laughs> Not very really soon. So you best. Um, go ahead. <laughs> um, so we are pushing ahead on commercialization, you know, lots of active discussions in the Indian market and in South Africa with commercial partners. Um, you know, we're probably 18 months, two years away from sort of continuing to push the technology and size and um, develop a potential platform. But we feel like we've proven the technology in the sense that it works uh, as a model. Um, in terms of foreign matter, that, that's a risk for us. Um, you know, we talked about screening. <laughs> Um, at the user interface, um, right now we're not. We're simply relying on education and um, you know, promotional materials to manage that. But that is a risk. Rocks would not do well uh, in our system. Okay. Order, order, color, order, color. Um, there is some discoloration now. Uh, we're looking at uh, additional polishing steps um, by you know, adding the treatment time. Another 20 minutes. We think we can sort of continue to, to push toward clarity. But it's, all, it's, it's close to clear now. Uh, there is some odor. It smells like it has a chlorine-like odor, which many people find attractive. Uh, some, some markets may not find that to be it, this, the smell that's attractive. Thank okay. Thanks a lot, Mike. Our final technology provider, Mr. Vicharin. Very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, I would like to thank everybody on CEPT for giving this fabulous opportunity. And let me make it very clear, I am a Fauji guy, Major Sir, ex army infantry guy. So don't expect too many technical answers from me, but I love to answer every question that you can ask. Uh, my guru, Mr. Kanan, he was in Germany for around eight to nine years. So I'll definitely love to answer uh, all the questions and I'll try to explain this system. It's a sewage treatment plant. As Rishi said, STP plants, uh, this is something which his technology will uh, take over STP plants. But till then, I'll try to <laughs> make over the resources that I have. As Kanan rightly says, and everybody will agree, there is no waste water, only wasted water. So how can we find out a solution for that? Sewage treatment plant, we are going a step backward because right from morning except Miles and uh, Rishi, we are the only people who are talking about STP. So we are probably talking about the initial stage and sludge was something the secondary stage. So it is equally important and you will agree most of the builders and uh, architects, engineers, at least in Pune, the strike rate, failure strike rate of STP is more than 80% I can safely say that, where STPs don't work. So primarily, we need to ensure that the STP works so that your sludge process can be better. Okay. Uh,
disadvantage, yes, with our system and first start with the disadvantage that our technology has. It is slightly costly and I have marked it up to 20%, but don't go by 20% extra than conventional MBBR technology that I am talking about. Uh, I can't probably compare with Rishi that we will discuss and come back to you. But the advantages that are offered are basically there are no electromechanical components in black water. So it's very inhuman to ask somebody to get into black water, get the pumps out just in case of failures. And any electromechanical equipment and water, they don't really gel well. So that would be one of the reasons why we don't want. It's the simplest uh, technology that I'm talking about. It works under very low load conditions. That is, next three weeks, there's not a single drop of sewage water, raw sewage water, it will still work. And that will probably answer the question that ma'am asked about Mahabesha, that uh, resort. From Monday to Friday, typically they are blank, there's no visitor. So our STPs work in absolute low load conditions. No criteria is 25% minimum NIG. We, talk, we are talking about the STP, which is about global standards, because Typically, the system, the main system comes from Germany, so they can't degrade it for Indian standards. The Indian Pollution Control Board norms requires lesser uh, BOD or COD and other factors, so they can't degrade that system. But we are talking about the global standards. It's very simple, lowest maintenance, no manpower. In case you have 70, 80 units, you can go for synchronization uh, online. Uh, you can uh, check the system. You can configure the system or probably you can go right up to SCADA level also but it's a very simple system and it has a bare minimum footprint for which I'll show one photograph. It can be designed even for six people if you wish to, if you have a small bungalow we can design a system for as small as six people which is 0.7 KD or 1 KD we can comfortably do it. As, as uh, I've already mentioned, these are some of the key features. I'll skip this since I have very limited time on my hand. So typically you have bar screen, collection tank, uh, 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 reaction tank, treated water tank. The treated water tank that I would like to tell you that the water in the treated, uh, before tertiary treatment will be much much better than whatever you expect. And the photograph that you would see next is for it. 48 bungalows that we have done in Chennai uh, where there is no tertiary treatment and the entire STP you can see the collection tank, SBR tank, treated water tank and the entire plant sits in this small cabin which also has a pump which pumps up the water to the higher heights from where it is gravity fed to the garden. This is again a STP which if anybody from Chennai or uh, uh, definitely share the address. This is for a multinational company, Deppening and Deppening, which deals into patents and lawsuits. This plant was installed six years back and as you see in the photograph, it is bang at the entry and exit of this company. Till date, Deppening and Deppening, though they are into international lawsuits, they have not sent any legal notice, so it works. <laughs> <laughs> and as I say, this is the footprint, a 110 flood scheme in Pune at Wagoli we have installed. This is our first installation in Pune which we did it in first installation and we did it in flat two days. That's the compressor. The only maintenance that you would require in this cloth type compressor is every six months you need to change the oil. The air filter needs to be cleaned once in, a, once in six months. That's the only maintenance and that is the only maintenance cost. In case if you want a higher end compressor, which is a, another type of compressor, I'll come back to you, I'm forgetting right now. Uh, Read re type compressor, which is for which there's absolute no oil, no grease. It has got a defined life of three years. So I just need to ensure that maybe 48 hours before three years are completed, that is 14 hours, 30 minutes per day operation maximum. And uh, if I change that read, uh, it will take care for next three months, uh, three years, I stand corrected. These are the parameters that I am talking about. This is the efficiency of the water that I can deliver with 95% of COD, BOD, 97 ammonium nitrate, phosphate suspended solids. So that's, and what is the technology? 
deliberately I have kept this slide at the bottom. The, the simple reason is how does it work if there are no electrical pumps to pump water from one compartment to another. It is the oldest technology 70, 80 years back when these guys they wanted to explore uh, hydrocarbon from mother earth which is at quite deep levels. So th what they can't do it with the pump so they push air by which hydrocarbon comes out. We are using that same technology which is known as airlift technology to move water either from the collection tank to treated water tank, uh, uh, reaction tank, from reaction tank to the treated water tank and the settled sludge from the reaction tank to back to collection tank. The, everything happens with the airlift technology in the very simplest manner and all that is done by a controller unit which is the brain of that system. So that controller unit basically decides, okay, okay last three weeks there is not a single drop of water that come, came into our collection tank. That means I need to feed my bacteria that's in reaction tank. Oxygen with aeration I can always give air and through which it gets oxygen. All I need to do is pick up some feed from the collection tank that is settled sludge. Feed, give it to the bacteria so that they survive for next few weeks. And that's the simplest way how I can keep my STP alive without any technical issues. This is how we, like somebody mentioned, I'm forgetting, I did mention, uh, note it down. Space is a huge concern. With any uh, STP, you tell us, okay, Ravi, this is the last corner, this is probably my, uh, the only area where we need to install. My only criteria, or probably you can say the second disadvantage would be, I need a depth of minimum four meters, that's it. Otherwise, you can ask me to put a STP under a pathway, basketball court, or wherever you wish to, and uh, we can design the tank accordingly as per your requirements. Thank you so much. And uh, any questions? Yes, ask Yes, please. Yes. Uh, so, I think I ask much. Please be seated. Yeah. I know you've been running around for that time. <laughs> uh, so, how much is the Inlet BOD or the inlet right. solid content right. that you can treat in the system. Inlet BOD, the outlet we can see clearly nine and all. But how much inlet can it actually take? See, any typical uh, residential uh, application would have an inlet of varying between 300 to 400, right? So that is the we can take it up. Absolute cost. What is the cost per year? Okay, sir. We, in this, we don't deliberately, I can't answer this question, but you can give me a case study. For a simple reason, there are various factors. See, tomorrow, when I say my only concern is 4 meters of depth, that is 3.5 meters of water and 0.5 meters is my freeboard. But tomorrow you say, Ravi, I want to squeeze one, there's absolutely no space. Like we are probably about to get a PO, I'm keeping my fingers crossed, where the space uh, width available with the builder looking at the other constraints from uh, the building is hardly 1.5 meters so the depth will be more than 5 meters and in that case I need to increase the compressor capacity again as I said what type of compressor do you require 3 years hassle free Ravi I don't want to see your face for 3 years I want a compressor I would like to wish uh, say thank you after 3 years with a cup of coffee so accordingly the cost will vary there are various parameters and definitely we will we are happy to give you a cost. Uh, on cost, yes, we are so dead sure about this technology that today if you want to sign, I can sign it on a dotted line. I can give you STP, could be for 5 people to 500 people on built operate transfer basis where you don't have to worry about maintenance, operator, nothing, chemicals, nothing, nothing. Everything is my baby. It is not required basically. But I can give it on BOT basis for the next 60 months. After 60 months, if you wish to, you can keep it or I'll take it back. Okay, sorry. Uh, just to continue my question. So what happens if I have, for example, a case where the BOD is not 300, 400, we are talking about septage here right now. So the BOD goes up to 5,000, 10,000, but the solid contents are less, like 1%. And in your system, it's a mix of water and sewage? Asim, I need to see some technical advice from Kanan. But definitely we will answer and I, I wanted Kanan to be here for this session but unfortunately since he had some other commitments I, I was very keen that Kanan should be here for this seminar. Okay, we'll get back to it.
Any other questions? Uh, thank you, thank you sir. Major. Thank you. My pleasure. It's been a long day, tiring, so I think, as they say, we should call it a day here. Uh, there's one final item that is left, and that's the group photograph. <laughs> so before we all leave, we would like to have a group photograph. I hope if the wedding hasn't started, we can just do it in the corridor outside, or we'll find some place. But uh, a few housekeeping announcement. The dinner is at the restaurant on the second floor of the hotel called 88. All those who are not staying in the hotel are also welcome. Just let us know if you are joining us or let anyone of Adhara or somebody know if you are joining us for dinner. Maybe around 8 o'clock we have asked them to keep some space aside. But at your own, uh, I mean you can join the dinner at any time that you Tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, we are meeting, I think the room again where we were in the room. So tomorrow we will begin and with the presentation from AIT. But then we all want our partners, the Indian, the NFSSM partners to talk about their work. I think we had sent the message, so I hope that each one of our partners here have not those who are presented, you are excused for <laughs> But others who... They, if they want, they can... Yeah, yeah, of course. We can talk about the work that you have done because some we have found when we went last time in Delhi, we had very little time to talk about what we are doing. So tomorrow morning, the whole session is... We can take as much time as we want in terms of discussion. And tomorrow afternoon, we have visits to the local areas in the town, so you are welcome to Those are anything else? Anybody? Sorry, the check-in. I don't understand what check-in is. So, uh, the people, the in-house guests were staying back today tonight. Your rooms have been allotted to you. I think your luggage also gone to your rooms. But if not, then just check at the reception. But the rooms have been allotted. Thank you. And tomorrow, the checkout time, I think, at the hotel is 12 o'clock. So by 12. After tomorrow. lunch, you can check out, bring your yeah. your bring your yeah, no, after lunch. During lunch break, you can check out whatever it is. We ask the hotel to extend the check out. Okay, group photograph. Let's go.